Swapping two variables in JavaScript is actually something that you fairly commonly need to do, especially in things like coding interviews, and there's actually a pretty cool trick to be able to do it. So here we have A and B, and we log out A and B, and we can see we have one and two. And of course, we could do something like, say, A equals B, but now if we wanted to say B equals A, this isn't going to work because both become two, because we set A to be B, so A is now two, and then we set B to be A, but A was already two. So we need to actually do something like let temp equal A, and then we could come down here and say B equals temp, and this would actually work. But this is just a lot of code. So there is actually another way we can do this that utilizes destructuring. So what I'm going to do is have this array syntax and say we have A comma B is going to be equal to, and then another one of these array syntaxes, and b comma a, and then I'm going to run this and you can see it does work. So a is two and b is one. And the way this is actually working is first we start on the right hand side. So we are creating a new array with the values b and a. And then on the left hand side, we are destructuring that array. So we are taking the values from the right and putting them into these variables on the left, which are our a and b variables that we already created. Now, of course, there's a trade off here in efficiency. So if that matters a lot in your application, you probably don't want to be creating arrays for no reason. But most of the time, especially if we're using JavaScript, it's probably not a major concern. And this is just a nice, concise way to do this. Here we have an array with a bunch of different values. And I want to talk about how we can filter this array. So let's say const filtered is going to be equal to, and what I'm going to do is call array.filter, and I'm going to pass in the Boolean function with a capital B. And what this is actually going to do is it's going to convert every value in this array to a Boolean using that Boolean constructor, and any value that we get false in filter, it is going to end up removing it from this filtered array. So from the new version of the array, it's not going to be there. So what that means is all of the falsy values are going to be removed. So now if we come down here and we say console.log, our filtered array, you'll see we have one, two, and three. So we removed zero because that is falsy, as well as false, the empty string, null, and undefined. And it's worth noting here that the original array is not going to be changed, so it is creating a new array. And I have actually seen this used in industry code bases, and it can be useful from time to time, but do also be careful with it because sometimes this isn't exactly what you want. For example, you need to know that you do want to be removing values like zero because that is a falsy value. All right, so here we have a JavaScript object for preferences with a theme as dark. But what would happen if we wanted to use variables to be put into this object? So for example, say we have some constant that is our property name, and we set this equal to our theme, and then we have a constant that is the value, and this is going to be dark. And we can do something like take this value and put it here in our object, and this would work the same as before. But if we used the property name, this is not going to work because it's going to assume that property name is just the name of the property. It's not actually going to read this variable here. And the way we can actually do this is by putting this in brackets. So just sort of an interesting point with the JavaScript objects, if you put these property names in brackets, it's going to actually execute this as code, meaning it's going to read from this variable and get the string. And you can see now we have the theme is dark once again. And this is just super useful to know because oftentimes we do need to create these objects where not only the values, but also the keys in those objects are dynamically generated, and this is how we can do that. Using numbers as human readable strings in JavaScript is actually kind of confusing at times, but there's a really cool way we can do it. So here we have this number, and you can see if I log it out, we get the number down here, but it's not super human readable. We don't have things like the commas to denote the thousands. So we could convert this into a string, so we could say string like this, but it's actually going to print out the exact same way. It's printing a string instead of a number, but the actual formatting is going to look the exact same. But what we can do instead is call this function that is going to be to locale string. And when I call this, you can see now we have this human readable number that's going to have these commas to denote that, okay, this is 1,234,000. That would have been much harder to see when just all of the numbers are bunched together. Additionally, you can use this with different locales because different parts of the world display numbers in a different way. For example, if I pass an ES, this is going to be Spanish, and you can see we swap the commas and the periods because that is just how numbers are actually written in most Spanish-speaking areas. And of course, there's tons of these locale strings so that you can be very specific with what region you want, or of course, you could also just use the user's system settings. You've probably seen and maybe even used destructuring before, but you might have never seen this. So here we have an object with A is 3. We destructure A from that object, 
and we log it out and you can see we get three. So we essentially are creating a variable called A that stores the value from this object. But what would happen if we also got B? Well, B doesn't exist on the object, so we simply are going to have undefined. And if I put B here, you can see we log out undefined. But what if, say, we wanted to have some default value? So if B doesn't exist, we want it to be something. So maybe we can say B equals 10. And this is going to be that default syntax for us. I'll also put a default for A. So let's say A is going to be 5. And you can see A is still 3, but B is now 10 because B doesn't exist in this object, so it uses the default. However, A existed in the object, so we don't use this default at all. We just use the value that was actually in the object. So if you know you want to destructure a value from an object, but you're not entirely sure if that value is going to exist, and you have some reasonable default in the case it doesn't exist, this can be a good way to do that. A lot of APIs tend to give us very strange data back in weird formats, and one of the common ones is these nested arrays to represent the values you got back. So here we have this array, and inside of that array we have a name is Connor and an age is 21. But this should probably be an object. It makes more sense for this to be an object, because this data is all sort of related. It's all about one single person. So the way we can do this is to say const obj is going to be equal to object.fromEntries, and this is going to take in that entries array. Then we can come down here and const.log our obj, and this is going to give us an object with name is Connor and age is 21. Now, of course, be careful with all of these things because you don't want to over-prioritize being clever over the code being good in other ways, such as being readable. You also don't want to over-prioritize performance, though, and if you're curious as to why, you should watch this video next.